Welcome back to another episode of The Four Archetypes. I am Dr. Lahab Al Samurai, and with me today, as always, Dr. Eric Tomlinson is here with us. Dr. Lisa Hong is here with us. And we are um, getting close to closing our fourth season. But that's uh, many weeks away. But uh, we've been doing this for a while. It's always interesting. Um, so welcome back, everybody. We're back into uh, the story, uh, the annotated uh, Arabian Nights. Um, so we continue, and now the story shifts. Uh, Shahrazad is going to start to tell stories to the king. Now... This is the first story. And the first story is always the story that keeps, that hooks. If you tell a bad first story, that's the end of the show. But if you tell a great first story, everybody wants more. So without further ado, Dr. Eric, would you like to read for us? Absolutely. They say, wise and happy king, that there was once a merchant who had wealth in abundance, capital and assets and credit abroad, many slaves and servants, a number of women and a number of children. One day he desired to see another country and set out, took his horse, filled his saddlebag with bread and dates, and for nights and days he rode. God had written that he would be safe. And at the journey's end, my happy king, he saw to his affairs and took the road back home. He had journeyed for three days when the heat and glare came over him. And as he chanced upon a garden, he took shelter in its shade. There he found a spring under a walnut tree. He tied up his horse and sat beside the water. And from his saddlebag, he took some bread and dates. And as he ate the dates, he flung the pits away. Then he rose and washed and prayed. And the prayer had not left his lips when in the guise of an old man, a jinn appeared, feet on the ground and head in the clouds and sword in hand. The old man came before him, before him and said, stand that I may kill you as you have killed my son. And he let out a roar that filled the merchant with a violent dread. What is my crime, he said. I want to kill you as you killed my son. Who killed your son? You did. I swear to God I didn't, said the merchant. How could I have killed him? Did you not sit down, eat dates, and throw the pits away? I did, the merchant said. Then you killed my son, said the gin. When he came this way, a date pit struck him in the chest and killed him. Now I must kill you. Don't do it, said the merchant. I must, said the gin, blood for blood. If I killed him, it was by, it was by mistake. Forgive me. Then the gin replied, I have to kill the man who killed my son. He threw the merchant to the ground and raised his sword, and the merchant wept over his wife and children. The sword was lifted higher, and the merchant's clothes were wet with tears. And the merchant said, There is no power and no strength except in God. And he spoke these lines. Life has two days, peace and menace. One part happiness, then grief. To those who hold the blows of fate against us, Ask, does fate help those it does not also test? Do you not see that storms attack only the highest trees? Earth has many places dry and green, but only those with fruit have stones to fear. And in the sky are many stars, but none suffer eclipses like the moon and sun. You thought well of the days when they were good and did not care which fortune had in store or what fortune had in store. The nights were still and tricked 
you into ease, yet in the calmness, night does trouble you. Again, the gin said, I must kill you as you killed my son, even if you weep blood. Must you, said the merchant, and the gin said, I must. He raised his sword to strike. They say, my wise and happy king, that the merchant said, let me go home and say goodbye to my family, my children and my wife, divide my property and put something in charge. Then I will return so you may kill me. I am afraid, said the djinn, that if I let you go and give you time, you will not come back. I swear, the merchant said, God is my witness. And the djinn said, how long? One year, said the merchant, to let me see my fill of my family and say goodbye to my wife and see my duties through. Then I will return at the new year. And the djinn said, do you swear to God? I do. The djinn released the man who mounted his horse and went on his way, heart sick. And when he saw his family at home, he wept with, without relief and his family reproached him and his wife said, what is wrong? Why do you mourn when we rejoice your return? How could I not, he said, when I have left one year left to live? He told her what happened and with the djinn, how he had sworn that they would meet again at the new year so that the djinn could kill him. His family fell into weeping, his wife tearing at her face and hair, daughters keening, sons in tears. It was a day of mourning and they said a sad farewell. And the merchant in the morning made his wishes known, divided up his property and cleared his debts, gave alms, called reciters to read surahs, and then he summoned white witnesses and freed his slaves. To the older children, he left their share of wealth, appointed guardians for the younger ones, and to his wife, he gave what she was due. The year went by, and when his final journey came, he washed and prayed, took his shroud with him and said goodbye, sons around his necks, and daughters in distress, his wife in tears. Their grieving hurt his heart as he embraced them one last time and told them, children, this was God's design, all people die. On his horse, he journeyed day and night until he reached the orchard and sat where he sat before and waited for the djinn with a heavy heart and streaming eyes. As he waited, an old man approached with a doe on a chain greeted him, the merchant greeted back, and said, why do you sit alone in a place haunted by jinn? The merchant told his tale about the jinn from start to end, and the old man was amazed that he had kept his promise and returned after a year. I will not leave, he said, until I see what happens with the jinn. He sat by him to talk, and as they spoke, Go on, Dr. Lisa. Read the intro, which we will call the um, prologue to our next story on the next paragraph and the next one. Here we are. Another man, old man, came near with two black dogs and greeted them and asked them how they were. The first old man told him what had happened to the merchant with the gin. Now the merchant promised to return at the new year so that the djinn could kill him, but the he him swore, himself had sworn to stay until the end. And the second old man was stunned and swore in turn to stay and see it through. Just as he sat down, a third man appeared, greeted them, they greeted back, and asked them what they, why they sat there looking sad. They told him the merchant's story and said they were sitting there to wait and see what happened with the djinn. And the third man also vowed to stay until the end. As they talked, there rose a cloud of dust, which cleared to show the djinn, a steel sword in hand, who came near without greeting them and picked the merchant out with his left hand and said, get up so that I may kill you. And the merchant and the three old men began to weep. Then the first old man with the doe came forward, kissed the jinn's hands and feet and said, crown of the kings of the jinn, 
If I tell you my story with this dough, you find it amazing and stranger than your story with the merchant. Will you grant me a third of your claim on his blood? And then the jinn said, I will. So the old man said, and that's where we leave you. Um, our tale continues next week, the tale of the first old man. So, um, great story. So this is the hook. This is how Shahrazad um, hooks the king. She tells him a story, but the story is missing a lot of pieces. And if the king um, lets her live, then she could tell him another story. And that is the Faustian deal, the deal with the devil. You tell me one more story, and I bargain for my life for another couple of hours. And every time I tell a story, so storytelling. So in Arabian culture, it's one of the oldest forms of communication um, is storytelling and poetry. Before people, before a lot of people learned how to read and write, um, that was the way of showing that you were literate. You, you could recite poems, you could tell stories. So what do you guys think of the story of the jinn and his son that died by a pit? Therein lies another story. <laughs> it's a it's a really good hook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also tells us not to spit pits in direction. <laughs> I I don't I think at least on the plus side to some of the stories we've read, at least there's some wiggle room with this gen. <laughs> I mean may, maybe there's a possible way out. There's a possible way out for the merchant. I don't know. Um, yeah, but he keeps saying, like the jinn says, I must. Every time he says, I must, I must. But he, the uh, the merchant, uh, is able to talk uh, like a good sales professional. He was able to talk himself into some more time, some more um Like Shahrazad's talking herself into more time. Right. So what is the greatest trick of all is to tell you what I want without telling you what I want. I'm going to tell you a story. But in the story lies the psychology of what I want. You know, which we go back to the to Young and the Youngians, or just Carl, um, Young believed that the stories, our stories, are, are is our psychology. This is how we think and feel in the world. So this is how she is um, showing herself. in the world that was really interesting i hadn't considered that uh the jinn is driven by a must as something that he must do but yeah. what is driving the must just like king shavas with yes Shavazad, drama Shavazad also yeah. says he must kill all the women yes yeah. and he's driven i was like oh wow that's, yeah. that's i hadn't seen that that's really interesting yeah. Really so, interesting framing, reframing of the true story of Shahrazad and the daughter. I'm <laughs> getting the names mixed up. The king and the daughter and, and where they are and how it unfolds. Yeah. yeah. So Shahrazad and King Shahrayar 
our our prime suspects. But Shahzad is actually she's the star. Right. She's our heroine. She's our hero. She is the one who is going to save the women of the kingdom because this maniac is killing them left and right. And so she starts with the first story, which means that what is the story? The story is about revenge. You kill my son with your pet and I am going to I'm going to have to kill you. Um, but the but Shahrazad's trying to explain through the merchant um, how blind this is, right? Because he he swears he didn't see anybody when he threw his pit. So how how could have he, he killed anybody, right? If I didn't see the person, how is it that I am convicted of his death? I don't even see him. That well, just goes to show you, Doctor Lahab, that as we all know, that sometimes our actions and words and have a very, very damaging effect on other people, and we're not even aware of it. Yeah, well, that's what he. What the jinn is saying, right? The jinn is saying, you caused his death. Did you not throw the pit? I said, yeah, well, you caused his death. Right. And therefore, I must take your life. And he says, and, and he, they go through this part where they say, my wise and happy king, that the merchant said, let me go home and say goodbye to family. My children, my wife, divide my property and put someone in charge. Then I will return so you may kill me. Now, it shifts. It shifts from, and this is how he makes the shift. He says, before he's like, oh, don't kill me. I didn't do anything. But he shifts. In the shift, the jinn shifts also. He says to him, I will return and I'm basically giving you my life. And the first part, it's the jinn is going to take a life. Now he's offering his life. He just needs some time. Then the jinn says that if he lets him go, you're not going to come back. I swear the merchant said, God is my witness. So, um, the jinn holds him to that. And in the end, the merchant told his tale about the jinn from start to end, and the old man was amazed that he kept his promise and returned after a year. I will not leave, he said, until I see what happens with the jinn. He sat by him to talk, and they spoke. So what happens... Three wise men show up. Three old men. Three magicians show up to liberate the merchant from the jinn. So remember, Shahrazad, our heroine, is a magician. So what do we have in the story? Magicians showing up. Brilliant story. Really interesting. This, uh, we're, we're talking about how, how revolutions occur. This story is a revolution in itself. Hmm. It's a story about liberation. Right? It's a story about how and why we must liberate ourselves. And of not ex accepting where we are and what the situation is. Right? 
So she, like the merchant, says, I come willing, willingly for you to take my life. But can I tell you a story first? So she transforms into the merchant and he is the vengeful jinn. Fascinating. So we will return next week with the first old man. And then as the weeks go, we will tell you the rest of Shahrazad's stories. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. We are the Institute for Conflict, and we are not afraid. I am not afraid. So say we all. So say we all. <laughs>